Hi there, so we're going to continue talking about factoring in this video. If you watched the previous video on factoring, it was just simple factorization. Things such as x squared plus 8x plus 16. You don't have to look for a greatest common factor there. You can go straight to the process, which is finding a number that, to, uh, finding two numbers that add to the middle number, multiply to the last number. I said that in the past video, the, uh, the last video many times, because I need you to understand that for factoring. Two numbers that add to the middle number multiply to the last number. So if you were good with that video and you had some practice with it, hopefully in a textbook or online, uh, welcome to this video and we're going to continue talking about factoring. But now we're going to talk about uh, times when, like for example, the one I just did, 2x squared, well, the one I did didn't need a common factor, but plus 16x plus 32. Things like this, you know, you could go look for the greatest common factor, right, which was 2 in this case, and you would get 2x squared plus 8x plus 16. And then again, you can go ahead, work your magic on this, find two numbers that add to this, multiply to that. But there are cases when you're not going to have that greatest common factor. Well, let me put up one of those cases, and then we're going to work through how you solve those problems. So let's say you had 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. Well, here we go. Now we already have a problem. Now there's no number that I can divide all of these numbers by and get that x squared looking, uh, you know, get something that looks like something I can factor. There's no number I can divide 2, 5, and 2 by. There's, it doesn't work. There is no greatest common factor. And we don't know how to do anything when we don't have an expression that looks like x squared plus 4x plus something here. Like, we don't know what to do when we don't just have something like this. Now we have to deal with something that looks like this. So there is a trick to doing these as well. So your first step is always to find the greatest common factor and then get that perfect looking expression that you can factor. But if you can't do that, there's something called multiplying in the sky, which many teachers call it here in Canada, maybe in America as well. But all that means is multiplying in the sky, and I think it is a good way of uh, calling it now that I think of it. All that means is you have to multiply this 2 by the last number here. So you take the coefficient of the x squared, so there's always an x squared, right? Whenever there's an x squared, you take the coefficient of that, so coefficient meaning the number that's attached to it, you take it and you multiply it by this, and then you write it somewhere, okay? So, so what's 2 times 2? It's 4, right? So I'm going to color code that and change that. It's 4, right? So I multiplied 2 by 2, and I said I wrote it down somewhere, right? So I wrote it down somewhere. And what's my middle term here? 5, right? So I'm going to write that down somewhere, too. Now it's starting to look a little bit familiar if you watched my previous video. Now I'm going to find two numbers that add to 4. Ah, my bad. That don't add to 4. That multiply to 4 and uh, add to 5. Sorry, a little slow there. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. But uh, that's it. So what I did, first of all, was it's the same kind of ordeal with normal factoring, where you have to find two numbers that multiply to something and add to something. But there's a little catch here. You have to take the coefficient of the number, and, uh, of the x squared, and you multiply it with the end number, the number that doesn't have anything attached to it. So you multiply in the sky, per se. You multiply 2 by 2 in this case. And now my last number isn't 2 anymore, it's 4. In this case, I keep it 2 there, but it's 4. So I have to find two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 5. So let's go ahead and do that. If you pause the video, you can try that. If not, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So two numbers that add to 5 and multiply to 4 are 4 and 1. So that makes good sense, right? 4 times 1 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. Now, if you watched the previous video, you're probably wondering, well, do I just go ahead and write the factors? Well, I'm afraid it isn't that easy. There's a step, uh, there's another step there that we have to deal with. So the step is, now that I have my numbers, right, I have to rewrite my middle number using these two numbers. You'll get the hang of it. It's very confusing at the beginning, but watch what I do here. So I write 2x squared, and instead of writing 5x this time, I'm going to rewrite 5x using my two factors. So I'm going to write plus 4x plus x, well x is the same thing as 1, right? 1x, x plus 2. So notice how I proceeded to do this question. So I rewrote 5x as a product of its 
factors as 4x and x. So, well, they aren't factors, they're just two numbers that have the sum of 5x. So 2x squared plus 4x plus x plus 2. It's the same thing as this, because 4x plus x is 5x. But I rewrote it this way. And now comes the second part. Now I have to group. So what I mean by group is that I have to find the greatest common factor for these two groups of numbers. So I have 2x squared plus 4x, and I also have x plus 2. So let's deal with 2x squared plus 4x. Again, you have to group it like this. You have to take the first two numbers, make a group of them, and then x plus 2 is my last two numbers, a group there. So 2x squared plus 4x, what's the highest, uh, what's the greatest common factor? What's the number I can divide both 2x squared and 4x by? Well, if you said 2x, you would be correct, because I can divide 2x squared by 2x, and I can also divide 4x by 2x. So what's 2x squared divided by 2? Well, that's simply x. And what's 4x divided by 2x? That's simply just 2. Again, so I factored these two numbers here, 2x squared plus 4x. Now I have to factor x plus 2. Well, what's the greatest common factor for x plus 2? x and 2. Well, there isn't really one. There's only number, the number 1 that works. So let's take 1 as a factor, even though it's kind of redundant, but uh, I'll take 1 as a factor and x plus 2, because x divided by 1 is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 1. Now you see something that looks like this. You have x plus 2 and x plus 2. You have that twice. If you see a binomial that appears twice, it means you've done this hard process pretty well. You're almost done. All I do now is the two numbers that I have, 2x and 1 here, I write that as a binomial. Binomial meaning two terms in that expression. It's 2x plus 1. And the other expression, x plus 2, I only write once. There you go. So in a way, I take x plus 2 common from, these, uh, from this expression. I took x plus 2. I found it was common in both of these. So I took that common. But you don't have to worry about that. All you have to worry about here is 2x and 1 were left on the outsides because they were the greatest common factors for the groups. So 2x plus 1 comes down here, and x plus 2 was the factor that I found. So I only write x plus 2 once. Now this is a lot of work, but this is exactly how you do it. So I'm going to do another example, maybe a little bit slower. Maybe you can try and do it even before I do it, like pause the video, try that. That could help. But again, I'm going to do another example, so hopefully you'll pick up on it slowly. Now again, this is supposed to be confusing. If you're confused, that's kind of a good thing for once, because it's supposed to be confusing at first, but again, it's mastery that's important here. So, let me just quickly erase this. Alright, now that we're done with that, let's do this example. 6x squared plus 5x plus 1 looks very weird. Again, there is no greatest common factor, right? I can't go ahead and divide all three of these numbers by a single number and end up with a good-looking expression that I can factor. That's just not possible in this case. So again, I'm going to do that thing called the multiply in the sky, or whatever you want to call it, where I take the coefficient of the x squared, which is 6, and I multiply it by the last number that has nothing attached to it. So in this case, it's 6 times 1. So again, write that somewhere and write the middle term as well. So 6 times 1 is 6, right? So I'm going to find two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. Again, the step is you take your coefficient of the x squared and you multiply it with the last term here. I'm repeating it because maybe repeating it will get it through and maybe stuck in your brain. So you multiply in the sky, you take the coefficient of the x squared, multiply it by the last number, and you write it down somewhere, which is 6. So I have to multiply two numbers that get to 6, and then the middle number is also key, that uh, two numbers that add to 5. So two numbers that multiply to 6. How did I get 6? I multiplied 6 by 1. And how did I get 5? Well, it's just the middle number here. So two numbers that add to 5. So maybe all that talking, you already figured this out. The two numbers are 3 and 2, right? 3 plus 2 is 5, 3 times 2 is 6. Again, now what do I do? I have to rewrite this expression using my factors. So what does that mean? Well, 6x squared stays the same, but my 5x, right, 
the middle term is really essential here, as in I have to rewrite the middle term using these two numbers. So I write it as 6x squared plus 3x plus 2x, right? Because those are my factors, 3 and 2, 3x plus 2x. And then what's the number on the outside? Plus 1. Don't mistakenly put 6 on the end because you multiplied 6 and 1 there and you got 6. Don't worry about that. That 6 that you got from multiplying in the sky, that's only useful for finding these two factors. So that's why, again, whenever you multiply 6 by 1, again, I told you, write it down somewhere else. So 6 times 1 was 6. So two numbers that multiplied to 6 and added to 5. So, okay, backing up here. So now I re rewrote my expression using my two factors where I changed the middle term and I wrote it as my factors, 3x plus 2x, great. Now comes the, really in my opinion, the harder part where many people struggle. What we do is we group two numbers. We have four numbers here, right? One, two, three, four. We group two numbers together. So the first two we group together and then the last two we group together. And now when we have them grouped, we, found, we find common factors between them. So what's the common factor in 6x squared plus 3x? What's the number I can divide both 6x squared by and 3x by? Well, you can pause the video and think about what I can divide both of them by. And always remember, you can break it down. Think about the integers first and then the x's. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say my greatest common factor. And once you have it, you write it like this, right? 3x on the outside. So 3x was my greatest common factor, right? because I can divide 6x squared by 3x, because 6 divides by 3, and x squared divides by x properly. And 3x can divide by 3x, you only get 1. Again, once you have your greatest common factor, write it on the outside. So 3x times what gives me 6x squared? If you said 2x, you would be correct, because 3 times 2 is 6, and x times x is x squared. If you watch my exponential videos, maybe exponents can help you out there. But anyways, 3 times 2 is 6, x and x make x squared, so I know I'm doing it correctly. And 3x times what gives me 3x? That's 1. There we go. We factored these two numbers off the bat. So we're done with these two numbers, we factored that. Now let's talk about 2x plus 1. What's the greatest common factor for those two numbers? And there really isn't one, so we can just say 1 is our greatest common factor because there isn't really a number I can divide both 2 and 1 by and get something even and proper. So I took 1 as my common. So again, if you see two binomials that have the same terms in them, 2x plus 1 shows up once, and then 2x plus 1 shows up again, that means you have done it correctly. This entire procedure, you've done it correctly. So what's my last step? Well, I collect these two terms that I have on the outsides, 3x and I have 1 on the outside. So let's collect them and put them in a binomial. So 3x plus 1. Ignore my horrible 3. I don't really feel like fixing it right now. But uh, get it? You collect the outside terms. And now the binomial that repeats, just write it once. So 2x plus 1. I just write once. That's all I have to do. And I'm done with that. So I'm just going to erase that. Hopefully, you understand now how we factor these expressions that we just can't go ahead and factor normally. Like, And what I mean by factoring normally is taking the greatest common factor, right? And then finding two numbers that add to the numbers in the middle, multiply to the number on the outside. So we can't just go ahead and do that for some cases. So just to jog your memory of what I'm talking about, I'm going to do an example I did in the other video just to make sure you're picking up on everything. So let's say we had x squared plus 5x plus 6, right? This is something that isn't really difficult because, again, there is no uh, coefficient in front of the x squared, right? There is no coefficient there, x squared plus 5x plus 6. It's simple factorization. We can just go ahead and do it. And just to show you something cool, there is something in front of this x squared. It's a 1, right? So the 1 we don't really have to worry about. And the reason why we don't multiply in the sky for this is because, guess what? When I multiply 1 by 6, I just get 6. So there's really no point in there. So for these questions, we find two numbers that add to the number in the middle and multiply to this uh, number on the outside. So I'm going to do this problem using this multiply in the sky method, okay? So just watch me, what I, watch what I'm doing. So some of you actually might just do multiply in the sky every single time. And I'll help you guys out that want to do that. 
And I'll tell you why multiplying the sky is such a viable method and why it works everywhere. So let's do 1 times 6, right? And I told you once you multiply the coefficient by the outside number, write it somewhere. So I'm going to write 1 times 6 is 6 here. So two numbers that multiply to 6, right? Two numbers that multiply to 6, and with the middle term is also key because two numbers that add to 5, right? So what are those two numbers? I think we've done this before. So 3 and 2, right? 3 times 2 is 6. 3 plus 2 is 5. Great. We're good with that. So let's take these and rewrite the middle using these terms. So equal to, so x squared doesn't happen to change. So x squared plus 3x, right? Plus 2x plus 6, right? So I just rewrote the middle using my two factors. And now I'm going to group. So again, group. So x squared and 3x, what's my common factor there? Well. There, uh, there's an imaginary one here, so one is the highest number I can divide by, but x is common in both of, these, both of these numbers, right? I can take x common, and what I mean by x common is just I'm dividing by x. So if I take x common, x times what gives me x squared? That's x. And x times what gives me 3x? Well, that's just simply 3, right? So we've factored these two numbers here, and now we have these two numbers here. So 2x plus 6, well, what are two num what is the number that I can divide both these numbers by? Well, that would just be 2, right? 2 is common between them. x is only appearing with 2, but not with 6. So don't do anything with x. It would just be 2. And 2x divided by 2 is just x. And 6 divided by 2 is just 3. So again, you see how I've seen uh, a, a binomial that appears twice. So collect the outside terms, x and 2 x plus 2, and rewrite your repeating binomial once, x plus 3. Now that's a lot of work, right? Multiplying this guy. So again, if you see something simple like this, guess what? You don't have to multiply in this guy. You can simply find your two factors, like I said in the previous video. So 3 and 2 were my factors, right? And I can just go right ahead and write it as x plus 3 and x plus 2, right? So I can go right ahead and do something like that because it's not complex. There isn't really a coefficient in front and there is no greatest common factor. There isn't really nothing to worry about here. So again, you don't have to worry about that. Just write it like this. If it's a simple trinomial,